I couldn't find it, right? But I, I swore I saved it on my phone because Knife sent me, Dr. Knife sent me a, a recent article about marijuana in America. And I wanted to ask you, right, do you think it's safe to smoke marijuana grown in America? I principally, I could only tell, I could tell you what I do. You know, um, I burn herb, I grow. Right, I, that's like a principle that I have. Right, I burn herb, I grow. So if I burn your herb, it must be someone that I highly regard. Because herb is not just a physical plant. You know, the phytochemistry, the components, the terpenes, there's not only cannabinoids in Gangina. You have polyphenols, you have terpenes, you have alkaloids, you have all type of different phytochemicals within, within ganja. And you know, you have all minerals too. So it's not only the THC and the, you know, and the, and the C CDB and all them things, that, that's not what it is. It's a complete plant. It's alive. Right? And what you will get when you measure it now, if you put it in a different end, because it's a, it's a spiritual plant, when you grow it in a different circumstance, different, different environment, it gives you a completely different type of meditation. We're not even talking about the spraying the chemicals on it. Yet. We're just talking about, about environment. Environment. Right? So when I grow my herb, I grow my herb with the intention for me to use it. Right? So when I am treating a, a client in my center and I'm giving them a herbal extract that I might just go and just cut three, four buds and get it pounded and squeeze out the juice and, and give them to drink it, that herb was grown just for that. You know, it was not grown to sell and to go and hustle and to make a money or medical marijuana. No. It's going for my usage. So if I know I'm going to use that, I'm going to steam it. You think I'm going to spray a chemical on it that, I, that can kill me? No. But do you think that I'm going to plant it in an environment where it could absorb? Because remember, you know, the herb is its medium, you know, where it grows in, you know. So what you give it is what it, you know. So. I would start from that point of view, that I personally use the herb, I only say smoke, I use the ganja that I grow, right? There is nothing intrinsically wrong with America. North America is a beautiful place, and you still have Central and South America, you know, and there, there are some beautiful people who live up in these spaces. Some wonderful soils. There are some rich, fertile soils in these places. Right? So there are people in America that grow good herb, also with good intention. So I won't go and say that don't smoke herb from America. That's a blanketed statement. You know? I would say that the man in Jamaica, or St. Lucia, or Barbados, that plant the herb in that, if a same type of mindset, and spray it because it has caterpillar and thing with a chemical, karate or something, and then go and sell it on the market. What difference is it in the herb going to America? So you're going to leave America, fly down to Jamaica to smoke a herb that was spray with the same chemical, or even a worse chemical because the chemical that you could get in Jamaica, you can't get in America because it's banned. You understand? So let us just stick to the principle of it. So it's not the space. You know, America is a beautiful country too. Nice, beautiful springs yeah, and green spaces and them type of thing that you know, yeah, man. So I wouldn't say don't smoke herb growing in America. It's how the herb is grown, because the herb could grow in the same evil way, right, in a different country, right. So I'd urge a man, you know, to principally, if he utilizes ganja, try to grow his ganja and have that 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 relationship with ganja. And for for those who cannot, you know, grow it themselves because of choice, because they. <laughs> If you really want to do it, man, there's nothing you can do, right? Then, I mean, at least be conscious of who you're buying it from. That you're getting something clean because you are incorporating. When you, 
I don't smoke spliff and these type of things there. Eh? Because if you if you smoking five spliffs per day, you know, if you just say that you have 365, if you if you just say 360 days, five, six, 30, you know, um five um five threes, fifteen plus three is what? Eighteen. Right? That's eighteen. Right? So you have a thousand eight hundred. Okay? So if you just say that it's a three hundred and sixty day, yeah, let's say the other the other, the other um, five days, you know, you know, you you you, you sabbatical from it. You smoking five spliffs a day. That means that you'd be burning a thousand eight hundred papers every year, like wrappers, right? So try and take a thousand wrappers and roll it up and <laughs> and pull it, right? So the same way, like if you take an aspirin, one aspirin twice a day, and there are seventy aspirins in the bottle eventually you're going to finish the bottle. So what's the difference between taking everything one time? Right? So you are exposing your physical structure to the effects of a prolonged period of time. So the consequences will be felt over that time. Right? But you are still consuming it. So then you, if you check on these things now, then you begin to make wiser choices in how you, what's your relationship with ganja? You know? So... Plenty of different things is just about education and just allowing people to just, you know, the, the time for them to grow. It's not about just telling a man that he should and that and you need to provide him with a solution. All right? And remember, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a continually evolving life. So everyone does be at their, at their space.